works well. Front there for De Klerk. We're now at 180 kilometres done. And the gap is opening. And De Klerk uh, probably left to fry a bit too long there. This group will be too fresh for him, I think, as we now go to the next challenge. Quite a serious climb here, the Kleisberg. And this will be the hill number five on the course. So there's still 11 more after this. This is a really tough climb. It's a tarmac climb, as you can see. There's Lars Mikkelsen nearest to us there in the white jersey. It's actually called the Mont de l'Enclou in French. And this is the part of the courseville that I feel is really the most strategic part, the beginning of the Tour of Flanders. Once they go over this, they drop down the other side. They've got the Cunotteberg coming after that, then almost immediately after that, the old Quaramont. And this is where the big pressure comes on in the main field behind. Obviously, at the moment, we've got this leading group of five riders who, for me, are five riders just hoping to survive and hoping that they'll get picked up by a leading group off the front of the main field. Currently being led by Frankie Andreo and Marty Jemison. That's good to see. And they're in there as well is Ekimov and in fourth position, Georgie Hincapi. So he's announcing the colours early. They are putting the four US Postal boys on the front here to drive this race along. It's good to see that Frankie is feeling good after his accident earlier this week and seems to have ridden himself back into some good form here. And he gives the team a lot of confidence when he can ride like this. And Jemison just behind him, the champion of the United States. He might well try and defend that title in Philadelphia in June this year. The gap, though, has flown up to three minutes now. And remember, the leaders are on the Kleisberg. The main field is approaching. This is a very hard part, and in fact, those leaders now down to four riders because we're hearing over race radio that, in fact, Eric de Klerk has been dropped by that group and he's caught somewhere in no man's land, soon to be picked up and left behind. You can also see the, the pink and blue jerseys of Lamprey. There's Evgeny Sprook there just in the picture. They're moving to the front now because they too realise they've got to move up their man, Franco Ballerini, who would certainly like to get a good placing in this bike race. He's the kind of bike rider who's always come up for the big occasions, always turns up for Paris-Roubaix or the Tour of Flanders. He's yet to win the Tour of Flanders, and that certainly would be a feather in his cap. But he is a superb classic rider. He's always there in the top six. He's so consistent. If you couldn't really follow a better man and be sure of a high finish, if you could stay with him, because he just seems to read classic races so much easier than most people. Nice shot of Marty here, flying the flag at the front of the peloton of the Tour of Flanders today. Bit upset he never got a ride on the team in the Tour de France last year, but he hopes that the situation will change this year, of course, when the US Postal will go in with the defending champion Lance Armstrong. A lot of US Postal Service riders very much to the front there. Not only are they being led up the, the slopes here by Marty Jemison, there's a few more guys over to the left-hand side. From George Hincapie looking pretty good. It looks as if Frankie Andreu is slipping away a little bit from the, the leaders here, but Frankie did his job. I think he was pretty happy and surprised to still be in at this stage of the Tour of Flanders because he had a pretty nasty spill in the three days of Lapana there, bruising a couple of ribs and uh, having to spend one night in hospital at least. But I'm glad to say that he's uh, safe and he'll be good in form, in good form next week when we go through to Paris-Roubaix. This is the chaos at the back. Yeah. The bike race certainly going on at the front. And the gap there, 2 minutes 58. That's the official time gap. Now, it's not a big gap yet, of course, and those riders up front are Art Vierhuten, Lars Mikkelsen and Jean-Mario Otenzi and Jesper Skibby. We believe that the clerk has been dispatched and we'll try and pick him up with our cameras as we move towards him, I would think, as the main field now... Well, I suppose, really, the big danger man up there because of his solidarity will be Mikkelsen if he stays away. Absolutely, but there's still going to be a big acceleration over the next few kilometres as we go over the top of the Klausberg. They go down the other side now and then they ride. This looks like there's a problem at the back. In fact, that is Marty Jemison and the other rider is Dylan Casey. So it's a swap of wheels here. I think it must have been Jemison who punctured and Dylan Casey, the younger rider, has given him his wheel to get him back in the race very quickly. So a good move there by the two boys. No team cars around to help out at that moment, so it should be OK for at least Marty. Not too sure whether Dylan will get back. Well, the problem with the Tour of Flanders is sometimes you've got to wait for two or three minutes because these roads are so narrow. And if a couple of bike riders have been dropped on one of the earlier climbs, the cars can be blocked. Bounders, I felt they've done an 